Hello people, this is uh, Saint Kyle or Sean Manloto if you like real names. Uh, might be a good video today since uh, I got some call card stuff, there's music at the back and uh, someone suggested that they don't want to hear music, they just want to hear my voice instead. So I thought that could be arranged. So anyway, let me walk you through here. This is a personal project character. And uh, I thought I'd do a speed paint on it because I thought I was more comfortable with the process. So, yep, let's go. So why am I working with pre-made line art? Well, it's because figuring out the pose is quite hard and line art itself is hard. Despite how fun it is, it's still quite difficult. So here you see me blocking in the colors and uh, the color scheme is, for my uh, personal project, is quite brown heavy. But I try to balance it out by putting some greens in there, as you'll see later. So, uh, I draw first, uh, technically, that's how you start it. Uh, how I start, I draw first and then paint over it later. You may ask if this has always been my method. Well, no, uh, over the last years I've been trying out the straight to paint, uh, straight to blocking things out with just shapes. And uh, I can still do that, but I prefer line art because um, Actually, line art is what I started out with earliest. Uh, first foray into digital painting, I started doing line art first. As a result of my traditional experience and scanning and stuff. So I, I scanned and then it was really dumb, you know, noob mistakes where you scan and just color over it or use the fill tool and then all your scan lines, you can see them. Yeah, well, it looks horrible. Okay. But uh, now. I've gone back to that, but of course I have a better grasp on it because of looking around and, and experience and just hating your work sometimes. Yeah. So as you can see, uh, I'm already in the rendering part of the piece. Uh, now it's either you hate it or you love it. Uh, I personally love it, but yes, it is quite, it is still the hardest part or rather the, the most tedious and time consuming part because you have to look. You have to make sure, if that is your style, you'll have to make sure that everything looks three-dimensional. So, about 80% of studying life, which I don't do honestly, is applied while rendering. So you can see, you can feel his, uh, his skin. Almost disgusting, I think, but I love that stuff. Uh, I pay attention to the textures a lot, and as you can see, uh, this part is where everything falls apart because I had a hard time with the scales. Uh, well, if you, if you see it fast, it's not very big of a problem because I make it look easy because it is fast. This video, by the way, is spent times uh, 5,000, I think. So, yeah, looks easy, but I was practically thinking like my life sucks while doing it. So, I'm glad that's over now. This part I think I needed to pause a little bit for reference, couldn't find any so I just winged it. I think it turned out alright at the end as you will see later. Uh, my brush settings, it's actually funny because I do have brush settings that I almost can't live without yet. I'm not at that point where I'm like uh, not totally technique conscious yet. I still am very conscious of my technique while I do this stuff because I don't know, maybe it's because of my experience, you know, it's sort of hindered. Maybe I play too much video games and sleep too much, but hey, I like this piece, I think. I think it's alright. I think it's good. Um, this character has been a while, uh, has been around for quite some time now. Maybe five to eight years. And then now I'm finally doing something about it uh, in a way that, uh, in a presentation that is quite professional, in my opinion, or more professional than I've ever done because I think I have a better grasp on the textures now, I have a better grasp on how to make characters, uh, how personality fits into characters and stuff like that. Costume design, I think I have a better grasp on that. Yeah, as you can see here, it's kinda industrial. Yeah, it's an industrial fantasy thing anyway, so you'll see later. I had a hard time with the belt because it didn't look like engraving, it just looked like someone Someone dyed a bunch of intestines and then caramelized them and then put them in his belt. 
that may not be obvious, but those are actually blunderbusses. And uh, the one he's uh, cradling in his right hand. As as you can see, his character is like uh, one hand is one hand has three fingers, and the other hand has our five fingers. Yeah, that's a story thing you'll find out later on. Hopefully, if I get to post anything up on YouTube about it, which I hope will be done. Maybe I'll do more characters and actually include the whole thing. Yeah, but uh, for a while, for at least maybe five more pieces, they'll all be pre-made line art. So as you can see, I changed the background to black. Why? Because values. So I can check the values, and if I screw up, um, I won't screw up because it has to work on both black and white backgrounds, and you'll see. Actually, I'm glad how it turned out with the black background. I think it's quite cool. Uh, just rim lighting because I can't live without rim lighting for some reason. Dramatic lighting is important in illustration and in uh, concept art, I think. You know, So there's reflected light and there's stuff like that. Notice how I'm only using a circular brush, the standard. Yeah, take that. I don't need no other brush just me friend the round and if you're not good enough different layers of opacity just to change the pace so I applied that during rim lighting and it's about to end now so thank you very much for watching the video I hope that you guys learned something it's sort of my way to adapt watching speed paints and stuff so I hope you guys adapt the same way and learn the same way as I do cheers